America's newest push toward fascism could be our last. And that's not necessarily good news. Check this out, leave your comments, sing the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Where do guns used to commit shootings in Chicago come from? <laughs> he asked the question in the article. There are no gun shops in Chicago, but the city is inundated with firearms. Police have seized more than 5,600 illegally possessed guns in Chicago this year alone. Uh, blah de blah de blah. Getting a gun in the city is like buying a pack of cigarettes at a gas station. Uh, where are they coming from? Well, it turns out, according to the FBI, 60% of all guns seized in Illinois or in Chicago have been purchased out of state, and 19% uh, of them came from Indiana. 95% of the cases, the person found in possession is not the original purchaser. People are buying them in other states and bringing them into there, into, into Illinois. 21% uh, of guns confiscated by police in Chicago are traced back to gun shops across the border in Indiana, a short drive from the city. The CPD Chicago Police Department's report identifies a number of specific gun shops in Indiana and the suburbs of Illinois that supply the largest number of guns that end up being seized by police. The co-owner of one such shop, Midwest Sporting Goods in Lyons, Illinois, told the Globe Post there's little the shop can do to prevent straw purchasers. Unfortunately, you can't be a mind reader. There's a whole lot, not a whole lot you can do. And it goes on, on from there. So, I rest my case. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lauren Green, uh, excuse me, Marjorie Taylor Green, Lauren Bobert, I uh, have, uh, in addition to trying to start this new uh, kind of white person's caucus, uh, excuse me, Anglo-Saxon values caucus, uh, which they've, they've kind of walked back from over the weekend. But, you know, this was their whole shtick was we're going to create this new caucus and it's going to be just all about us and, uh, you know, of, of, uh, Anglo-Saxon values and all this kind of thing. I, you know, I think it's fascinating, actually, first of all, that they're, they're, they're actually having to walk back from it. Um, I called it the Ku Klux Caucus, KKK. Uh, and, and, it, and really what they're calling it is the America First Caucus. And the original America First movement started in, aut in the aut autumn of 1940. Franklin Roosevelt was president. There were a lot of people in America who were saying we really should get into World War II and help out. There were also a lot of people in America, help out the British specifically, a lot of people in America who were saying, no, 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 no. Uh, Roosevelt was doing his Lend-Lease thing and all this kind of stuff. And so this America First group started uh, with open support for Adolf Hitler. You know, he, we, we can negotiate with him. He's just, yeah, he's a bad guy, but he's, you know, he's not, he's not our problem. And they were also big believers in the Great Replacement Theory. That Jewish people were paying to bring non-white, non-Anglo-Saxon, uh, you know, British ancestry is the, the, even though it's not technically what it means, but, you know, what, what they believe it means, um, that this is what was going on. And keep in mind, this was... It was 1939 when Adolf Hitler invaded Poland. So we're talking August of 1940 when the America First, the official America First movement was started in the United States. It had over 800,000 members, including future President Jerry Ford, future U.S. Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart. It was largely funded by the billionaires of the day. We didn't have billionaires back then because we hadn't had Reagan's tax cuts yet. But it was the families who owned Sears Roebuck and the Chicago Tribune. They're very, very wealthy families. Dr. Seuss did a cartoon. Actually, he did several cartoons about America First. One showed two guys, two old guys, kind of Uncle Sam kind of guys uh, with long beards. And the two beards were kind of all twisted together in the middle between them. One said America First. The other had a swastika on it. Uh, probably his most famous one was a kangaroo a female kangaroo and, uh, that said America first across, across the top of the kangaroo. And then in her pouch were two baby kangaroos. One was labeled Nazis, the other was labeled fascists. The leader of the America First movement, again, this, you know, Lauren Boebert and, and uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene wanting to start the America First caucus. The leader of the America's First movement, Ch Charles Lindbergh. Lucky Lindy, remember him? 
Well, you may not be old enough to remember him, but you probably read about him. First guy to fly across the Atlantic uh, solo. He addressed this whole, you know, Jews will not replace us thing in one of his most famous America First speeches, in which he said of Jewish Americans, quote, their greatest danger to this country lies in their large ownership and influence in our motion pictures, our press, our radio, and our government, end quote. Right. <clears throat> In the introductory documentation of Green's now put on pause caucus, uh, she said that they would only be interested in voting for or promoting infra infrastructure, quote, that befits the progeny of European architecture. <clears throat> it really doesn't take a dog to figure out what that whistle means. She did, she did say, according to this document, the Punchbowl News got, that uh, it was all about following in President Trump's footsteps and potentially stepping on some toes and sacrifice sacred cows for the good of the American nation. And what might those sacred cows be? Well, societal trust and political unity are threatened, they said, when foreign citizens are imported en masse into a country. I, I just find it astonishing how you know, all our borders are still closed. We are processing some refugees, but that's a, a, a somewhat different thing. All our borders are still closed, and yet Republican after Republican, I saw this twice over the weekend, Republicans on TV saying, Joe Biden's open border policy. And then those clips get played down in Central America, and you wonder why people are like, hey, maybe we should head up to America. But Liz, Liz Cheney, who's, you know, no shrinking violet. <laughs> she tweeted over the weekend about, uh, you know, Boebert and, and Green's new America First Caucus. She said, uh, she didn't name it, uh, you know, by name, but it was fairly obvious what was going on here. She said, Republicans believe in equal opportunity, freedom, and justice for all. We teach our children the values of tolerance, decency, and moral courage. Racism, nativism, and anti-Semitism are evil. History teaches we all have an obligation to confront and reject such malicious hate. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you could, uh, uh, yes, <laughs> Liz Cheney is rejecting these folks. But really, if Republicans actually believed in equal opportunity, freedom, and justice for all, maybe they would be interested in letting everybody vote. If they believe in the values of tolerance, decency, and moral courage, maybe they would be talking about doing something about, you know, the, the uh, de facto uh, discrimination, uh, segregation in the United States, uh, and, and so on. But in any case, she's, she's opposed to it, so probably uh, Boebert and Green are going to get a, a few more members. I mean, really, all they have to do is just get the, white, the, the old mailing list for the White Citizens Council or the existing Klan and mail out to those folks. But, you know, really, our most horrific crimes have always been around race in this country, whether it was the genocide of Native Americans, the arguably the largest genocide in the history of the world, or the slave trade of this country that turned the South into a violent ethno-nationalist police state. And its black residents still live in a state of terror that persists in many ways to this day. And it's not obviously just the South. It has metastasized all over the United States. This is just not healthy stuff. And when it's been tried before in the past where politicians are using cheap rhetorical devices to promote hatred and division purely for political purposes, it almost always ends in disaster. We have to take a careful look at this and say, no, we're going to reject this.